Rawr. 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 As I'm learning to work with my new camera, I have discovered some new things I can do. For instance, the pram cam shot. The dramatic gear shift shot. The wheel shot. And not to forget, the chasey chasey shot. Now, as you might remember from the last video, I mentioned a package would be sent to me. And it did arrive during the week, and it was basically an unopened box that originated from Hitchcock's. And I wasn't sure what to find inside of it, but when I opened it up, my heart leapt with joy, because it was exactly what I felt that the Interceptor 650 needed. Now what those parts are, the keen observer might have seen a few hints during the opening videos. But we get a closer look at it in a bit. But for now, I want to comfort you with the fact that you're not going to see a video of me piecing it all together on the bike. Although I did meticulously video every step, it was actually quite easy. Hitchcock provides a manual with each part, with all the fasteners that you need. Now I have to say I was a bit confused because sometimes there is slight difference in models and I think in one or two parts, or I think in even just one, I had like, things just looked a little bit different. And before I really panicked, I just checked the parts that were included and it seemed all fine and really fitting for everything to put in place. So it was actually easy peasy. So instead of a build video, it's going to be a drive video and we'll have a look at all those parts in the later bit. But I decided to share a bit of the road of the R759 going into the Wicklow Mountains. Oh no, not another Wicklow Mountain video. Yeah, but it's worth it. I mean, the visuals here, the scenery are just absolutely stunning. But also, one big reason that I wanted to make it a drive video is that I wanted to show the reaction of people to the bike. And I know I'm going to start harping about Badger getting all the attention. But I think Strider is definitely up for the task. But the proof is in the pudding. So we go find the pudding. But for now I'll let you enjoy a bit of the scenery. And uh, we'll get more into the details of the parts and the reaction later on.
enough I spotted an opportunity to test the perception of Strider with his new facelift on a lonely and unsuspecting fellow motorcyclist. As I approached this wary BMW GS800 driver, I showed him that I had all the good intent and even hoisted up my pants to show that I was harmless. And we quickly had a chat like bikers do when they meet each other in the wild. As we were chatting away and him mentioning he was looking to upgrade his aging RS with a new one worth 22,000 euros and I said how much I paid for mine, he definitely became curious and finally came to check Strider out. So I think now it's a good time to show you what all the fuss is really about. So first of all we got the 1969 style interceptor handlebars from Hitchcock. It allowed me to remove the risers that I had installed and putting the original mounts back on with these handlebars actually they turned out to be a little bit higher than the ones that I originally had including the risers and it looks much neater. I also was quite surprised how much the ergonomics and the handling of the bike were improved by these handlebars. I had less fatigue in my wrists and I had the impression that the steering was much more forgiving. It just felt much more in place for somebody with my size. And I also have the Hitchcock stainless steel polished front and rear fenders based on the 1969 model. And to finish it all off, I have the Lucas Light reproduction on it as well, make everything tying in. And as final piece of the resistance, it had included the round indicators that come with the American model of the Interceptor 650. I always wondered why they put those ugly small indicators on this bike because this looks so much better. So as I left my fellow traveler pondering about the wisdom of upgrading his motorcycle with the knowledge of what he could get for even less than half of the money he was looking to spend, I knew my experiment wasn't done yet it needed reproduction and to be honest I had to quite coax a reaction out of this encounter so I was determined to repeat this experiment in an even less controlled environment and for that purpose I knew I just had to go to Glendalock Cafe because on Sundays you are bound to find a gathering of motorcyclists especially in weather like this. So, enjoy the rest of the ride till we get there and it won't be long.
I decided to play it cool and just to hoist up my pants to show I was not dangerous but otherwise not initiating contact and just see how the natives would react to Strider. And I wasn't disappointed because soon a flock of admirers came walking in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, she does sound lovely. She lo she sounds bigger than she is. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. she like with speed though? Huh? What's she like with speed wise? Speed wise? Oh, it's not a fast bike. No, no, 60, 70 miles an hour now maybe, is it? 100 miles an hour. She do. Yeah, she do. She do. Yeah. She do. yeah. Bringing all the old retro styles back, aren't they? So soon enough I found myself answering all the kind of questions I would get when I normally would be out on Badger. And uh, I, was, I was really pleased with the result here. Um, obviously the facelift of uh, the Interceptor 650 actually has done wonders. And there is actually another thing that I think I forgot to add. Um, I had the tour saddle that is actually meant for the GT version. And uh, I got it because I got the proverbial wooden arse quite a lot with the original seat. But after mounting all the goodness that came in the box, the seat just didn't match the look of the bike. And I decided to suffer the original seat again. But to my surprise, it was comfortable. I had no more pain in the back, no more wooden behind. So I think the impact of the handlebars has completely changed my position on the bike, making me ride more comfortable and being more confident in handling the bike. So yeah, if there's one upgrade in that box that's really worth going for, it is the higher handlebars of the 1969 style. And thus having mission accomplished, we went by ways of Sugar Grove Mountain just to pop on the motorway to make it straight home. And it turns out that even on the motorway I will have looks, but they better not blink because I smell the tea and I want my cup in. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Frankie's World.